The next thing about Hyper-DVG is its kernel uh, debugger. Uh, we can use the kernel debugger to set up uh, Hyper-DVGs. Uh, it's called K-Hyper-DVG. Uh, you need to have you need to set up a physical serial port or a virtual serial device, namely na or something like a name pipe. Hyper DVG debugging needs to support Intel VMX and Intel EPT, but we can uh, but it also uh, is able uh, to run on a nested virtualization environment like VMware wor Workstation. Let's see a demo. Uh, first of all, I have to create a, a completely uh, a serial device. You have to turn off your VM. And then let me just uh, to create a new one. I will go to the add a serial port. I specify a serial port. Then I use a named pipe. Uh, we can also load it uh, to a physical serial port. Port is also possible to use this method, but uh, for no, I prefer to use name pipe because it's easier. Uh, I choose the name uh, Hyper DVG pipe. You have to specify this string first before your name. Uh, it's like uh, backslash backslash dot backslash pipe. Backslash. This is the end. Uh, this is the end service. Yes, and the other end is the virtual machine, and also we should yield a uh, CPU and pull. So I will create it, and it will be connected at the power on. We want to again see this uh, <laughs> device. It's also added here. But for now, I will return to my previous state, which I already made uh, the debugging uh, serial uh, cable, uh, cable uh, here but it's also okay you can start it and you will probably be fine uh, in my current uh, this is the way that i use to debug hyper dvg i will create uh, some uh, snapshots from the state of my uh, vm uh, uh, after that because it's, everything is ready and tools are ready and it's easier to start the uh, <laughs> virtual machine and after that I try to attach a WinDVG to it like uh, I used to make a, uh, a script for it you can see uh, that I just started WinDVG with my key and uh, my port address. And after that, uh, the WinDVG is connected. The reason why I always connect a WinDVG before connecting HyperDVG is that I want, as I explained previously, I want uh, WinDVG to bypass the driver signature enforcement for me. So both of the, whenever the WinDVG is attached from the start of a, a system, then uh, the patch guard won't get a chance, uh, won't be uh, run or won't get a chance to get executed. So we don't have patch guard and it's uh, really easier to debug. And also another thing is that uh, it uh, it just stops uh, it uh, the driver signature enforcement and I can uh, continue easily with that with, with an unsigned version of the hyper -DVG. so basically i have this uh debugger here no it's time we should return back to our host this application is executing in host you should first start from the host not guest uh, for uh, for the first step there is no need to the guest and i specific the that debug command in the dot debug command, uh, we specified uh, dot debug remote name pipe, and we put the name of the name pipe that we previously added to the uh, VMware here. So I put it here, and now it just waits for the debugger to connect to the us. There are also other options. For example, if you want to. Uh, 
connect to a remote serial port you can specify its uh, its name uh, for example like com3 or com2 based on your device uh, 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 your device com port details and uh, now it's time to go back to the guest debuggy run the hyper -G as an administrator because it needs the privilege to install the driver again i use the debug command and instead of using remote as the first parameter after the, the dot debug command i use the prepare command which shows that we want to prepare this uh, this computer to be debugged by a debugger uh, i know that my com port is mapped to com2 there might be also on com1 you should test it and see whether it works or not or you can directly see the the uh, device manager and uh, find the specific mapped com serial port uh, device for the uh, the device that we previously added to the VMware. So I use uh, this command and uh, just wait till uh, the hyper DVG uh, is connected here. Actually, if you see that uh, VMware tries to connect and whenever VMware uh, tries successfully, you'll see that uh, it, it, it was just unsuccessful at our first step because the uh, the VMware was not connected to the uh, the VDBG was not connected to the VMware, but now it connected and everything is fine. If I execute it again, you can see that uh, now the VMware uh, is connected to the VDBG, and uh, I'm as the driver signature enforcement is uh, not is disabled. In this stage, we can run HyperDBG. Also, in the uh, host state, uh, I have uh, HyperDBG, which says that it's basically running on a Windows 10 Pro. It's actually Windows 11, but uh, they didn't update in, in the current version. They didn't update the registry file that shows the uh, Windows name, so it's a problem for Windows, not for HyperDBG. It starts getting the symbol details from the debuggy system, and now the debuggy uh, everything is interpreted and created. So we can press Ctrl C and stop the debuggy. As you can see that here, the debuggy is currently uh, working and is, uh, and is in a running state. But if I press Ctrl plus C, just everything stops and I cannot uh, do anything in the debuggy system. So everything is halted and the debuggy is waiting for a command. So I just clear my string and press G is exactly like WinDBG to continue or uh, target debug. You know, it's right. Uh, this is how we can set up the kernel mode debugger of HyperDBG. Okay, now uh, we can use the dot start or dot restart command to create process or make another process or other things related to the process.